Okay, looks like people are arriving. Not big numbers right now, but uh, we'll get the show started. We'll see how long this goes for today. And away we go. So, hey everybody, Jem Schofield here with C47. And another episode of the live stream. Successfully been doing this weekly, uh, but still haven't figured out sort of the day and time that this is going to happen. It's been on Thursdays so far, but I imagine that in the long term it's going to be a little bit uh, different. And let's just start. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you to our sponsors, uh, Mimo Live, which is a multi-in, multi-out live video engine provided by Boinks software and it is a pretty amazing solution for people like me who want to do live streams like this. I feel like I, maybe one day I could be like Mark Marin and I can do something for stamps.com but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, also from Rode Microphones who provides uh, professional audio recording solutions for the industry. That's not their tagline. I just made that up. But uh, I like to use their mics and they make some cool stuff and I've been using it for a long time. And lastly, we are coming to you, I am coming to you live from MCM TV in McMinnville, Oregon. And they're the local television station here and they allow me to and give me the opportunity to have this studio space that I get to book, which is pretty cool. Um, today we're talking about NAB 2018, and I am Jem Schofield. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit myself. I uh, basically have a website called the C47.com. I also have a YouTube channel, which you are kind of on right now. What's up, Sean? What's going on, man? Um, and if you like the content that you see here or on the YouTube channel, then please subscribe on that little logo over there with the clothespin behind it, or as we like to call it, a C47. Um, so there you go. Hopefully you guys can hear me and everything is okay with all of that. Seems to be relatively successful doing the live streams here from MCM. And again, uh, Jem Schofield from the C47. Check out my website. Check out the YouTube channel. Subscribe if you like what you are hearing, what you're learning, what you're seeing, and all that good stuff. So as I said before, we're talking a little bit about NAB 2018 today. We're going to talk about gear. Um, the only way this is going to work on episodes like this is if you guys actually chat because um, I have a few things to talk to you about, but this isn't sort of like the audio one where I start going into and showing you different microphones and all that stuff. I still need more recommendations, by the way. Go to this website, go to the contact page, click on and fill out that form. Tell me what kind of content you want to see educationally that can pertain to topics for the live stream. It can also, boys and girls, pertain to topics for videos that I shoot uh, related to small to no crew production. So here we are, NAB uh, 2018. I cannot believe it, but I, as an educator, will be leaving in exactly two weeks, actually earlier than that. Well, no, in two weeks, but early in the morning to head to the airport for a 6 a.m. flight, and I will be going to teach at the show for my 17th year, maybe. Oh, there's my screen sharing function, by the way, if you want to see how trippy that is. I clicked on the wrong one. Um, but this is the show, and if you've never been to NAB, I'm not telling you to go or not to go. It is a <laughs> it's, its own thing entirely, and I remember when I went there uh, first time in my 20s, which uh, was a long time ago, uh, I was overwhelmed beyond belief. And 
uh, I still get a little overwhelmed, but it's a little more manageable now because I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, this year, I'm going in on the Thursday, and I will be checking the equipment that is starting to come in for my workshops. And then all day Friday, I will be going to a location off the strip called Polaris Studios, which is a sound stage. I'll be setting up with my crew, and then on Saturday and Sunday, I will be teaching two full-day workshops. Um, on Saturday, I'll be teaching a workshop with a very uh, close friend of mine, Robbie uh, Carmen, who is a colorist. He runs a um, uh, post house in Washington, D.C. He does very, very high-end stuff. He is, to my knowledge, the only Dolby Vision certified facility on the East Coast, or at least in the Northeast. So uh, dccolorist.com, Robbie Carmen, uh, and I will be teaching HDR from production to post. And we will basically be going through the production side of HDR, and then in the afternoon, Robbie will be doing the post. It's part of uh, NAB's post-production world conference, which is a separate conference, a paid conference, and people start to come in at the end of the week before the show starts, and they start on the Friday uh, all the way through the Wednesday, and there are so many classes and workshops, but these are field workshops that are taught uh, generally off-site from the convention center, and so... Um, I'll be doing two of them. So this is the field workshop itself. And then the uh, second workshop I'll be doing, uh, which is on the Sunday, will be called Small Crew Corporate and In-House Production. So it's all that small to no crew stuff, live, on a sound stage with talent, with tons of lighting equipment and things like that. That one's sold out. I uh, have to check in on the HDR from production to post. But they're both going to be a lot of fun to teach. And then I'm going to be doing some stuff on the floor with Canon. I'm going to be meeting with a lot of companies. I'm so excited this year because normally I am in a classroom or running around the uh, Central Hall, sometimes the South Hall, but generally the Central Hall for uh, days on end. And I get to see everybody for a few minutes in the evenings, sometimes at uh, industry functions. And this year is going to be a little different. I'm going to have a little time. I'm going to be doing some, uh, again, some stuff with Canon, I think on the Tuesday at their uh, booth, or as we like to call it, a small city. And then I will uh, be doing something with Able Cine and News Shooter on the Thursday, kind of a rap show, which I'm really excited about doing. I did something similar at uh, Cine Gear last year. Hopefully we're going to pick it up at Cine Gear again this year. And it's all good and all fun. So let's talk about this thing called NAB 2018. So far we are getting uh, some initial announcements coming about, uh, nothing major. If you go to newshooter.com, uh, you will find that there are a few things that are there. In fact, why don't I do this and see how it all works? Everybody, please excuse me while I share the screen here. We might as well use this feature here. And if I have enough um, bandwidth here, we can pull up newshooter.com. There's my buddy, Eric Naso. Um, and he's talking about that new Ursa broadcast camera, which is not an NAB announcement. Uh, but we have this thing right here, which is the Teradek uh, 10K bolt. And essentially, this is a long-range bolt solution for wireless transmission of video signal. Obviously, uh, in a lot of situations, we'd be using this in drone applications. But they've also come up with another product as part of these pre-NAB uh, announcements and it's called the bolt manager and the idea behind this is that you can basically uh, handle and configure all of this wireless stuff without the use of a computer so pretty cool you can check that out on newshooter.com uh, bounce right over to here and we'll turn that off so Sean has a flight book to NAB but he's also up for a job during those dates um, yeah Sean let's hope Hopefully get together. Um, you know, jobs supersede the show most times, but that's why I work at the show. Then I get to go to NAB. And, you know, it's kind of ridiculous because I don't really like Las Vegas. Um, I, I don't gamble. I love good food, so that part I do like. Uh, but I have to say that for me, going to the show has everything to do with not only being able to teach, which I love to do, uh, but it has so much to do with seeing all of those people that I only get to see once a year, if 
if you know if that but usually once a year um yeah i gotta figure it out i sort of i mean i started doing it when i was a kid you know i think the first year i taught nab um i was definitely in my 20s so uh i you know fake it till you make it and i'm still trying to make it but uh hopefully people learn some stuff when i'm doing this so yeah there you go so we've got um the Teradek Bolt 10K solution uh, that has been announced and is coming to the market. But uh, I'm anticipating, at, at least in terms of sort of the, the trickle down, we want people to get to the booth to see our product. Uh, quite a lot of announcements coming down the pike in the next week to week and a half related to the show. Um, I think one big difference, though, is that we'll have to see whether or not there's anything major in the camera department for the show. Um, we'll see. Um, this year, I'm not under any major NDAs. Um, we'll see, yeah, whether or not that A7S III is going to come out. Uh, you know, in the rumor mill, there hasn't been anything that has uh, basically been registered for that potential camera body but it is something that i think everybody is waiting for in that mirrorless space it's interesting to see what fujifilm is now doing um with their h1 camera system they're definitely coming into the system no doubt resolve 15 um only because would we ever have a six to 12 month period without a new rev of resolve uh no and probably nothing in the Final Cut thing, but I'm sure we're going to see some more stuff from uh, Adobe. It's been a little while, and uh, one time, one of these days, we're going to have to rewrite the code for that because, unfortunately, um, you know that thing is crashing hard like the old Final Cut used to all of the time. Um, <laughs> that's funny, Sean. Three months, if that, between Resolve updates. Yeah, no, no kidding. Uh, I, I do like the fact that Blackmagic has kind of, you know, uh, kind of reeled in a little bit when it comes to their camera updates. Um, I like the fact that they've done this broadcast camera, ENG-style camera, for $3,500. You know, you build that thing up, and it's just over $5,000 for something that would have cost, oh, my God, for a two third inch chip camera system, so much more money in, in the past. It doesn't fit necessarily all of the people that that i'm talking to and what they're doing but it does fill uh and put into the market something that that needed to exist i think um i'd love to see some stuff i mean let's talk about some of the stuff i'd like to see though i don't know if we're going to get it who's bothering me yeah that's okay we'll see what happens i've got a lot going on in my life right now uh, new pocket camera, UHD capable, would be pretty awesome shooting raw. Will we see it? Have no idea. Um, I would like to see some new stuff from Atomos, um, not necessarily in the monitor recording space. Um, I'd like to just see some more recording options from them and have some ideas. Don't really know anything, but I've got my fingers crossed. Um, I'm going to knock on wood that's an apple box there so i think that counts it's a full apple that's a lot of i can't say that all right i'm gonna hold back um and then uh i'm i'm hoping we see some new stuff in the camera stuff but um i would like to see uh whether or not this trend continues in terms of camera announcements at cine gear because last year we really saw that cine gear became the show that uh you know these announcements were being made and i think that most of the people that i know that are in the industry uh are definitely looking at cine gear very differently than they did a few years ago you know for us in a lot of ways if you're not in the broadcast field if you're not into the satellite trucks and all of that stuff um I would say, you know, what's interesting about Cine Gear as a show is it is entirely focused on what we do as an industry. So it's really about video production and filmmaking, and it's not about anything else. And NAB is everything that has to do with broadcast. So I think that um, it makes a lot of sense that cameras get announced at NAB, I mean, at uh, Cine Gear. It, it doesn't not make sense that they would get announced at um, NAB or IBC, but I think that Cindy Gear is a great fit because it is so focused as a show. And I think that it worked well last year. I mean, we had uh, 
two relatively major camera systems that we started to see at Cinegear, the EVA-1 or EVA-1 from Panasonic and the C200 slash C200B. And also, um, you know, we also uh, got uh, essentially the, the pre-tease at Cinegear for the Venice camera from Sony. Yes, the EVA-1 under the cloth at NAB and they teased it and then it came out at Cinegear. So I guess we're going to see what happens. Um, I'm always game for talking about new toys and uh, new gear and kit and all that kind of stuff. I'd like to see the evolution of where we're going with lighting and whether or not we're going to see a lot more in the um, basically color tunable fixtures that we have on the market that are um, you know, starting to crop up from more than just uh, the, the larger manufacturers. And I'd like to see where companies like Aperture are going. I'd like to see, you know, where companies, well, Felix just released the Q8 Travel. That's a pretty interesting light. I, I did a, a video on that recently because I was able to see and get a, a pre-production model of that light to kind of check it out. Pretty interesting for now. I've used the uh, 500, the Q500 and 1000 in the past. So it's nice to see that they're continuing, you know, what they're doing in that space. And uh, it's always exciting to see what people are doing in the grip area. So I think that, um, you know, for me this year, the infinity arm and, and sort of what you can do with that, uh, really very exciting. Um, like a lot of the stuff from Triad Orbit as a company and their IO system and what you can do with that. Um, and I have a lot of equipment in the garage that I need to shoot a lot of videos on. And it's also about modifiers. So um, we're going to be talking a lot at the show about, uh, you know, the C47 DP kit and the book light kit. Um, if you go to Westcott's booth, you'll see those products that I designed with them for lighting control. But I also love other solutions for very specific lighting fixtures. I have some stuff in right now uh, where I can take two astrolites and put them into DOP choice solutions, these rabbit ears, and create nice large soft sources. So I'm excited about doing that. Um, yeah, I would love to see, hey, Zeke. Um, more Thunderbolt 3 solutions, you know, uh, USB-C, but really the Thunderbolt 3 component of that and what we can do with that. I'd love it if we start to see um, price points start to come down in terms of the storage solutions that we're using. Um, you know, there's a lot of great drives out there now that are SSD, that are Thunderbolt 3, that are really, really fast in terms of editorial solutions. But the price point is high. You know, it's not like you just go out and buy, uh, you know, a half a dozen of those two terabyte solutions and carry them around because they're still sitting in that sort of $800 to $1,000 price range especially for the rated solutions that are out there. Um, I love those rated solutions. I think that they are fantastic, but they are definitely expensive. And, um, you know, I think we're going to really sort of see more than likely a lot less <laughs> 3D, which we weren't really seeing a lot of last year at NAB 2018 either. And also uh, we're going to, Nah, I, we'll have to see what happens with VR. I might be interested to see where VR and 360 and all that kind of stuff is at this show. Uh, we are talking, by the way, if you just showed up, about NAB 2018. Uh, my name is Jem Schofield with the C47. Uh, we do a bunch of stuff. The stuff that we do is basically in four categories, video production, filmmaking, consulting, and education. So there you go. If you like what you see, do this thing. Click on that logo, subscribe, and then I can create more free content for you guys. Uh, let's see what we got. Hoping Sound Devices comes out with Pix E 6-inch uh, and Mix Pre 6T. Yeah, I mean, you know, the uh, their, their solutions in the video market have, have been sort of like, you know, pretty slow right now. And they make incredible stuff. Obviously, Sound Devices' strength is in their audio gear and their audio solutions and integration into something like those, uh, you know, monitor recorders. And we'll have to see where that whole space goes. I don't think we are getting rid of monitor recorders yet in the market. 
Um, I think that they have and will continue to exist. And interesting solutions, of course, uh, with the Sumo being released last year at NAB with these much larger monitor and recording solutions where you can use them as one or both depending on what you're doing on your productions. So um, I'd love to see smaller format uh, recording solutions that are less about monitoring but just can uh, allow us to get to, you know, uh, families of codecs like ProRes more easily. Uh, of course, many of us are shooting in uh, UHD nowadays, at least as sort of our capturing, mastering resolution. And then we may be finishing at 1080 still for a lot of our projects, but um, more and more clients are, are starting to ask for that. Um, it's, it's definitely not a, a 70 or 80 percent. In fact, uh, Mike, uh, Mike Sutton over at Kessler just did a little survey and, you know, I think it, it holds true that most of the time it's more of a conversation with a client. It might be us bringing up that conversation of why they might want to acquire in, in UHD as opposed to, uh, HD. Um, UHD, 4K for the masses. What can I say? All right, so there you go. So I think those are the things that I'm excited about for the show. Um, you know, I've got my workshops coming up, and then I'll be spending a lot more time on the floor this year, hopefully having a lot more time to have conversations with people like you and just talk shop and talk about what's going on and hang out and um, really kind of, you know, check out what is happening. I do think I'm going to be creating some content at the show. I'm not going to make it... Uh, new shooter style. I'm going to let those guys do that and the other people who create that content. Uh, Zeke says, never attended classes at NEB. There is so much on the show floor. Any classes that are worth the cost? Um, funny that you should ask, Zeke. How about my classes? No, I'm, just I'm doing an HDR from production to post and the small crew production uh, workshops on the weekend. Those are full day workshops. Um, post production world is really sort of the place where you're going to find most of that education. So you'll see here, you go to nabshow.com. There's a link to it here uh, in the live stream. And if I go over here to the hamburger menu and we click on that, let's just see what the hamburger says. We'll go to post production world. It really used to just be post production, as in post production, but now it's post, you know, and then you got that productions because so much production based training here and this is the conference that I normally teach at this is part of um, my field workshops are part of this and you'll see here that there's a full grid here that's broken down by day um, starts on Friday with one field workshop which is um, you know being run by a few of the instructors that are part of that and that is again a field workshop and then we get into Saturday and you'll see at the top like for instance mine is up here on the top right that's the HDR from production to post and then we get into this grid here with all of these different tracks with educational classes and you can buy individual sessions you can also do um, you know hands-on training and there's Sunday, there's my other workshop over here, small crew, um, and then all of the individual sessions that are all happening at the conference center. So these are all happening at the convention center. And then it goes all the way through, uh, making you guys dizzy, through Wednesday. There's a little bit of stuff on Thursday, but that's really just hands-on training. Um, so there's a lot of stuff here that you can get yourself involved in, and you don't have to... Um, go to, you know, each one of them. <laughs> You're not a plant. Yeah, that's funny, Zeke. Uh, you, that's my segue into the sessions again. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so post-production world is a paid conference, and, you know, you have to check that out on the NAB Show website, and you can see what that is. A lot of companies will send people out um, and basically have them attend the show but also get training and education. The people who have been teaching there um, are great instructors. I mean, they're, they're, most of them are people that I know well and I've known for many, many years. Um, they're very, very good at what they do and also how they teach it. Um, you know, I've sort of gotten now into this groove where I'm doing these field workshops, uh, more in-depth, you know, longer training, uh, full-day workshops, which I love to do. So what are the chances Sennheiser will announce XLR transmitter with phantom power for AVX series? You know, I don't know. 
uh, photographer at large. Uh, it would be great if they did. I think it's a great solution. There's so many good audio recording solutions now in the wireless space. Um, I think the AVX series is a strong series. Obviously, they just released their new um, version of their um, their wireless transmitters and receivers as well. I, I've gone blank. It happens sometimes. Let's go find it. And uh, come on, kid. English. No, come on. I'm. We're going here. Sennheiser uh, Wireless. That's got to give us something. Here we are. Come on. Here you go. Uh, this will get me where I need to be. Headphones and headsets. Here's microphones and wireless systems. It's the G4, so the Evolution series just announced. I've had the G3 series. Um, just sort of an evolution in terms of simpler to pair, simpler to use, some additional features. So this is sort of the G4 series, and, and both are very strong. I just love that AVX um, XLR receiver and how it works and how small it is. And so it's pretty cool. So, yeah, I'd love to see some stuff from Sennheiser coming out as well. Um, don't know of anything from Rode. They generally don't do the show in terms of a booth. They usually announce in a different way. So I wouldn't anticipate we're going to see a new microphone from them right now. Um, but I guess we'll have to see. And uh, so cameras, I think we're going to see most of that at Cine Gear, though I hope we have a surprise or two. Um, don't understand why more manufacturers won't build micro SD recording into transmitters, if anything, as a backup to wireless drops. Yeah, I agree. Um, they are and are part of some of the solutions out there, but it is not a standard feature. And it would be fantastic if they had it. You're receiving the signal in that receiver anyway. So why not have a backup there so that you have a safety? So I'm, I'm all for that. Why not do it? Micro SD, teeny tiny, put it into uh, an adapter so it becomes SD. Pop it into the side of your uh, Mac. Oh, I forgot. There is no SD card slot anymore in my MacBook Pro. Uh, but I have all of these things, and they seem to work. You know, it's additional. I've got one plugged in there, but I have two of these that plug right into the USB ports, and then I have my SD card reader and micro SD and uh, USB. I've got HDMI on the back. They're pretty cool. You know, they do the job. I don't have lots of dongles and stuff, so I have two of those that I use for my productions. Make sure I don't use. There they go. Um, so what else? I'm going to keep this episode relatively short today. Um, I just kind of wanted to talk about NAB and a little bit about the show. But is there anything that anybody has as a question that they would like to ask that is either related to the show or that has to do with small to no crew production at all? And if not, then we'll finish up. And if so, I'm happy to answer the questions. Uh, I've got a little bit of dialogue going here. I think that the long term is that we get a lot more of that dialogue because it really does make a difference. The live streams are all about this back and forth. It's about answering questions. It gets unwieldy when the numbers get large, but the goal is for the numbers to get large and then to have a moderator. Um, so Sean, I am definitely going to have time to hang out. Um, that's the whole plan this year for 2018. It's to spend time with manufacturers and other users and other companies. And while I will, in fact, also be doing a couple of things and I will have some prep, um, for instance, right now, Monday, uh, I'm going to be on the floor checking out stuff. So I'm super excited about that. I cannot tell you when the last time, never, at NAB, I got to do that. So this is going to be a real treat for me. I've done it at Cine Gear, and I absolutely love it because it just is some, it feels so different to be able to just go around and have conversations with people and not to wave at them as I'm running with a piece of gear to go to a classroom to teach a workshop. And that's what my life always is at NAB. And for the people that know me, they know that that is very, very true. So um, I'm going to get to be a pest this year and spend some time really talking to the companies that I work with, that I know, with the people, and uh, 
I really like to do that because I have a lot of, I hope they consider me a friend as well, but I have a lot of friends that, uh, that I would like to spend more time with at the show. So Sean, let's make sure that we, um, you know, that we get to actually spend some time at the show and go over some stuff. And, uh, what's the deal? Do we do our, um, did we actually do the, the podcast? Did that go live or what's the deal with that? Is that happen? Any information on that, Sean? Got some data for me? Um, I'm waiting for an answer. You'll find out if the job goes through. Okay, well, actually, yep. Yes, educational podcast. Yeah, what's the deal? What's the dealio with that? What can you tell me about uh, all of that stuff? Yep. Let me just check. Oh, oh my God, I'm losing. Yeah, are you are you doing anything, Sean? Is what I'm asking. Um, yeah. Okay. Good. So just let me know what happens with that. Uh, Sean is actually a DP who is based out of Portland, Oregon, and um, he is um, originally from Austin, I believe. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah, I was confusing myself too, Sean. It happens. Um, good. Uh, yeah, I'd love to be on there. So that's good. I just actually did something with Studio Sherpas. Um, that's at studiosherpas.com. In fact, that's what I was just looking for to see if it's there. Let me just do a little share here so you guys can see that. And I'll do a little shout out. Uh, boom. Let's type it in. You guys can check that out. So Studio, whoa, Studio Binder. I don't need that, though maybe I do for certain things. This is what happens uh, when you try to do things live. It's okay. As long as you can hear me and the picture's there, boom, there it is, studiosherpas.com. We go to podcast, and you scroll down, and I don't know, there I am doing something. It's like uh, threading in a needle or something. Uh, but there's a light there. And where was that? Oh, that's at Abel Cine in L.A. So they pulled that image. And here we are. This is a conversation. It's uh, titled, What You Need to Know to Stay Ahead of the Shifting Video Industry with me. So I guess you can check that out. So studiosherpas.com. And then you will just go ahead and click on the podcast section and then the podcast that I did with them last week right before this live stream. But then I'd like to do one with you guys, uh, Sean, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I think that's it. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. There's my ugly mug again. Again, me, my website, boom, subscribe. I'll keep creating content. Um, <laughs> you're originally from Nashville. So Sean's from Nashville. I was thinking Austin for some reason. That's not right, especially if you're from Nashville. That's kind of an insult if you're from Nashville. So thank you, everybody, for watching this episode today. Uh, if you're coming to NAB 2018, then please let me know. Maybe we can get together. Uh, I don't do shots anymore. I was in the old days, and that was even pre-NAB. So, you know, what can I say about that? Uh, but please subscribe to the channel. That is importante for more content to be created, free content for you guys. Uh, if you want to give recommendations for content for both the main videos that I create on the YouTube channel and also for the live stream, please go to the c47.com, click on contact, fill out the form, send it to me, and it will definitely be considered for what I'm doing. Uh, I'm signing off for now. Uh, basically what happens in a minute Zeke, I'm looking forward to NAB as well. Uh, hopefully we can meet up. See you next time, Sean. Uh, what's going to happen now is it's going to go back to the logo, and the audio is going to drop, and it will be the end of the episode. So signing off. Thank you, everybody. See you soon.